Hey, hi, welcome back to the series of A Spy Sessions. I am Dr. Krishna Hema, your A Spy expert. So today we are going to discuss about level three. So in the previous topic, we have discussed about level two. And in this one, like we would like to discuss about level three. So let us get into the topic in detail and further slides. So, what is level 2 and level 3 and what is the difference between them? So, as I said in the previous tutorial, like level 1 is achieving all your base practices and implementing your work products. So, level 2 is, that is, level 1 is called performed. So, level 2 is managed and level 3 is established. So, what is performed? So, somehow I did that activity is performed, okay? And managed is you try to get a uh, good performance or you know you have tried to adjust your uh, performance in order to meet your expectation but level 3 is like you became a pro in that and you are trying to get the same or a step uh, you are trying to implement the same same thing uh, in in all the parts of that particular project or it, it, you are trying to define a standing standard operating procedure based on the winning or based on the victory you have achieved in the previous project so this is how it is so level two is talking about the performance management so uh, your performance process performance is managed that means is it tracking and uh, are we tracking it are we um are we tracking it? Are we trying to adjust it? Are, are we revising based on uh, the expectations to meet the expectations? So this is how it is. Uh, this is, it is PA 2.1. So what about PA 2.2? PA 2.2 is about work product management. So how you are going to manage the work products? It is like you have to uh, provide a naming convention for that, version control, access control, and uh, you have to have the reviews in place. And you have to have a, a baselining mechanism and you need to define uh, the means like you know how to the con complete configuration management plan or configuration management activities comes into the picture in PA 2.2 okay we are done with level 1 and level 2 as well so what about level 3 level 3 is is about establishment of the process so PA 3.1 is talking about process definition so this means uh, a standard process is defined. So, do we have a set of standard processes or do we have a particular SOP which is defined for this process? Okay, and PA 3 or 2 is talking about process deployment. So, you have developed a process, you have written some document. Okay, you need to communicate that I have already a well defined process in place and you need to implement it in your project. So, that's why I'm like you need to provide an awareness training or you need to uh, provide a training on implementation of it. You need to facilitate the team like, you know, when they are re-implementing. Okay. That's when like you need to go and say like, you know, yeah, this is how I, uh, this is how you have to implement. So whenever they get some doubts in implementation part, so then you need to pitch in. You need to uh, stand on your toes to facilitate them. That's called process deployment. So let us get into the details furthermore. So what is level 3 in detail is PA 3.1 is talking about standard processes defined, sequence of interactions detailed, identified roles and, roles and competencies, infrastructure and work, management, work environment, methods to monitor the process. So it is talking about standard operating processes or SOPs or process feedbacks or the process change requests. Okay and process improvements okay which i can say and uh, the process metrics so first of all you need to define a standing standard operating procedure for that particular process okay in that you need to define a flow process flow what is the sequence how it is interacting so what comes first what comes next okay uh, dependencies what are the outcomes in uh, what are the input uh, products or this is how you need to define okay and the next step is who is going to implement it. For example, if I say the project management plan to be available, okay, who is responsible for that? 
a project management manager is a responsible person so that means your role is project manager so the competences is like you should have a minimum of 10 years experience okay in the project management area and he should man is uh, he have an experience of at least a minimum of five projects management before or you know he should have a pmp certification he should have uh, um, like you know well understanding of estimation methodologies so i just gave an example okay uh, so this is how the competence is to be there okay and in case of infrastructure and work work environment in case of software work environment you need to see the seating seating and you need to uh, see the refreshments uh, or you need to see the uh, laptop configurations and uh, the availability of uh, the hardware uh, work environment uh, so uh, the test environment how to test uh, set up bench so these all things uh, to be taken care of. in case of manufacturing unit like you need to see like you know all uh, the control mechanisms to be uh, to be set in place like you know how you are going to monitor like you know what is the uh, what is the frequency to you know uh, to service it or uh, you know uh, how when to replace uh, how to check the wear and tear of uh, the manufacturing equipment so these all things you need to consider in terms of infrastructure and work in environment things and methods to monitor the process is like you need to set up a define metrics like you know how you're progressing on in, in the particular uh, in particular uh, process so um, in pa3.2 is talking about deploy a standard assign and communicate roles roles, roles responsibilities and authorities ensure necessary competencies resources and infra in information collect and analyze process performance data so here comes into the picture process tailoring process management, skill management, or the competency management, trainings, apply process metrics. So here comes it, like in 3.1, we have a SOP defined, okay, which has uh, all that, all these things, okay. In 3.2, we need to deploy a standard in a way like, you know, you need to provide the awareness to the, to the team that we have come up with SOP, okay. In that SOP, you ha we have this process flow. We have defined a role, okay? You are uh, playing that role in this project, okay? And you are responsible for these things. And you are authorized to, you know, um, uh, to accept this release, okay? To accept uh, this particular review check, okay? This particular uh, inspection, you are authorized to uh, approve it, kind of. And we need to ensure on the competences requires. For example, uh, you should have uh, a C++ certification. Okay. You should have uh, a good understanding of uh, database management. So you should have uh, uh, a good understanding of uh, uh, battery management. So this is how it is like the competences. So uh, in the competences also you have a, a scale level. So 0 to 10, 0 to 5, something like 0 to 3, like, you know. Uh, the maximum level is the pro level and the minimum level is like you know it is a beginner level so you should have a predefined set of competency for this particular requirement of the project okay and then next is resources and infra in information so you need to have a data you need to collect the data you need to analyze first of all you should have a data you should collect it and you should analyze it and you will get to know the performance of the process okay and uh, here comes to the picture like you know based on the requirement of the project so your uh, set of standard stand sops okay your sop will be tailored based on your requirement for example if you are in, if you are if a project is responsible for a design so all the design related activities will be applicable to your project and the rest all um, life cycle processes like the requirements or the testing or um, the coding part or your uh, manufacturing part, your certifications part, this all will be not applicable for your project. Okay. Let us get into the detailed generic practices of this level 3. Okay. 3.1 is process definition, pro, uh, process definition, process attribute. 3.1.1 generic practice is talking about define and maintain the SOP that will support the deployment of the defined process 3.1.2 is talking about determine the sequence of interactions that means workflow of the process okay 3.1.3 is talking about roles competencies responsibilities authorities 
of that particular standard process. 3.1.4 is talking about identify the required infrastructure and work environment. Okay. 3.1.5 is talking about de determine suitable methods and measures to monitor. That means you need to define a define a set of metrics for, which are applicable to monitor the process. So what about 3.2? PA 3.2 is talking about process deployment process attribute. Okay. This means it is talking about entire process deployment. How you are going to release the process. How you are going to adopt the process. How you are going to deploy the process. Okay. So in the 3. Dot, it, it's, it has six uh, sub processes or the genetic practices uh, in place. So GP 3.2.2 is talking about deploy a defined process that satisfies the context specific requirements for the use of the standard processes. So that means first of all you need to Define the process means you need to tailor the process. Here it is. It, it is exactly into 3.2.2 is talking about assign and communicate. So you are responsible for this role. You are this role. You are responsible for this thing. You are authorized to approve it. You are authorized to review it. You are authorized to, you know, you are an author of this particular document or the particular uh, activity kind of. Okay. You are going to perform it. This kind of things. And 3.2.3 is about ensuring necessary competence you need to maintain a competency matrix okay or the evidence of competence in case of uh, iso 26262 but in uh, in normal terminology it is competency matrix or skill matrix okay and 3.2.4 is, is is about provide resources and information to support the performance of the defined process so we need to assign the resources so either it is harder resource either it is a human uh, it is uh, it is a human resource we need to allocate it we need to uh, we need to allocate him or her like you know you are responsible for this thing kind of 3.2.5 is saying about provide adequate process infrastructure to support the performed uh, so we have uh, we have come up with uh, a proper infrastructure and work environment so all this infrastructure complete infrastructure may not be required for your project okay all your work environment related things like you know which may not be applicable for example if you are dealing with uh, uh, the test equipment who, which is sensitive to the electrostatic uh, thing then you need to have this electrostatic mats on top of your uh, cubicles right so this may not be applicable for all the process projects so that's how the work environment or the infrastructure to be uh, rephrased as per the requirement and 3.2.6 is talking about analyze data about performance of the process to determine to demonstrate its suitability and effectiveness so we need to finally we need to we need to have a data collect the data analyze the data and we need to monitor the performance of the data so this is how it is so i'm i came to the end of this topic so if you like this concept click on the like button if you want further more automotive concepts so subscribe to my channel thank you